Let us move on to reading. Now, there are several purposes for reading. You may read to get an information. That is what you usually do in the newspaper. It's light reading. Now, sometimes you'll be reading for pleasure. A short story which you read. You lie down on the, on the couch and then you'll be reading. But then when you're reading a scientific report, you got to be very critical. You read every line. You check for validity. You, you, you will read between the lines. It's a different kind of reading. It's an intellectual process. It's very serious reading. Now, these are two advertisements you see, which actually appeared in the newspaper. The first one, used toilet paper for sale. Do you think anyone will buy a used toilet paper? Or even a mattress with a slight urine smell. Will somebody buy that? Now, you're all scientists. Can you think of one way of using them? Do you think this is just a joke? No, it's not a joke. It was actually advertised in the newspaper. Well, the toilet paper, you can recycle it. Now, if you have a pet at home during the rainy season, if you buy a mattress, your pet can sleep on that mattress. It wouldn't mind the urine smell, I suppose. So here, reading critically is important. Now, there are a few terms. There are several terms. I'm just highlighting one or two. Ambiguity is when the meaning of a word or phrase or a sentence is uncertain. You're not sure what actually that person is trying to refer to. That is ambiguity. In scientific writing, you cannot have ambiguity. You'll be miscommunicating. Maybe it's something you have done after years of research. And if your very sentence is ambiguous, they get a different meaning, then everything is lost. Just look at a sentence. It's something a person said. Reading on the terrace is the best way to relax. So it looks so simple, that sentence, you see. Uh, I hope you can imagine what it is. Reading on the terrace is the best way to relax. So I hope you'll be imagining someone sitting and reading. Am I right? But actually, that person was referring to this. You see here, what you said is ambiguous. It doesn't mean what, what you actually see in your mind's eye. They're two different things. The sentence is slightly ambiguous. Equally important is bias. Like you, you tend to favor something. There's some kind of a slant. And you think that is right. That's a bias. Now you see this person reading. Now this is a pavement book stall. And if somebody says, Pavement bookstalls are the worst place to read. That is only an opinion, I think. Uh, sometimes uh, in the evening, if you are taking a walk, you will see several pavement bookstalls. Sometimes you may come across treasures there. Books you are on this search for, you are hunting for, you may get. And for light reading and all, this is okay. But then uh, if you simply make a statement like it's a bias. Fact and an opinion. Fact, you know, is something you can verify. But opinion is, is you are expressing your feeling, definitely. Now, if suppose somebody says, she was reading a novel, but I'm sure it's a boring book. Look at it, lady, if you want to really check whether she's, you just ask her to, you can borrow the book and then have a look at the title, and you'll know. So it's a fact. The first part is a fact. But the second part, I'm sure it's a boring. It's an opinion. Something which is boring to one person will be interesting to another person. So such, you cannot have opinions in scientific writing. Maybe at, at one point of time you may be, but when you're trying to convince something through continuous research, opinions uh, get rejected easily. But I'll show you a video. And after watching the video, I'll show you a passage. Are you ready? This is again from the YouTube. Uh, it's monkeys reacting to magic.
Well, here's a write-up based on the video. I know it's very difficult for you to read. I'll also help you. But we are going to check whether there is any bias in it, if there is any ambiguity in it. I said it's about the entire video, whether he has left out anything, whether there's any omission, whether he has made a reference to another text or anything, whether the sentences are mere fact or an opinion, whether evidence is provided. That is what you look for, these bias, ambiguity, and so you'll check when you're reading a scientific article. I'm going to read it out. I know it's difficult for you to read from the screen. Sure, animals can be surprised by vanishing objects just as humans can. It's from the Scientific American. I talked to Franz de Waal, the world-renowned primatologist. De Waal had, been, had seen the video. I don't know what to make of it, he says. So I watched the video 477 more times. And I swear, Dr. D. Wall, the baboon reacts to the trick, or at least the hands in her face before the eye contact from the human. She has to be reacting to the magic trick. Why would I believe another bona fide expert over my own opinion? After all, I'm a person who, who saw a video on the, on the internet, and damn it, I want to believe that monkeys believe in magic. Look at this, the passage again. Do you think there is any bias? Has he left out anything? Here he speaks only about the baboon, I suppose. But I had showed you a video about Moro, a chimpanzee too. Is there any reference? That's what you look for in any passage given to you. See what I have put in red? Scientific American, it's, it's from a journal, so there's some kind of an authority. And the words of a famous primatologist, world renowned, again, authority. This person says he has seen 477 times. In science, you repeat experiments again and again, but is this equally valid? And then he says, my own opinion, do opinions count for a scientist? So if somebody says that monkeys believe in magic, can we admit it based on this passage? Think about it. And such kind of reading, your ability to look at it critically comes through practice. Here are some tips to improve your reading skills. You have to read a variety of text types, and then you have to concentrate on the text for the meaning. You have to practice reading with set time limits. And you have to develop the ability to quickly recognize words. Now, I've seen people who read a novel uh, uh, 10 pages in one hour, 20 pages in one hour. There are some who read 30 pages in one hour. Of course, it depends on the text and on the novel too. But when you read at the speed of, say, 20, 20 pages per hour, and if you read to quickly recognize words, you can increase your speed. But then critical reading is not just the speed alone. It's the ability to identify loopholes. And reading a science article requires great concentration. And constantly your mind should be asking, is this valid? Is this biased? Is this an opinion? Is it justified? Is it based on authority? These kind of questions should keep on propping up again and again. That's the kind of reading you are expected to do as a scientist.